to equip us with necessary skills. I, again, I do think a lot of us have other skills with Google, so this is just Microsoft version of it, but it is it can be used for formative ass assessment and to also get online information. You'll see that I did uh, make one for us to just have a look at. Um, what I used that was not education based. It was actually just something that we used at our school, but we'll get to that just now. OK, so these are our outcomes for today is um, we're going to introduce Microsoft Forms to you. So I'll show you how to log in or how to get to Google Forms, uh, Microsoft Form, and then we will create a basic form and we will do a survey. We can use this then for your assessments. Remember that this is just for formative. So just to check what knowledge your learners um, lack or what information do they need. Um, this is not formal assessment, not for so it's formative, not formal assessment. And then we will also look at branching. That is quite a nifty little tool. And then we'll do data analysis and insights. And after that, we will do the Q and A. So, Andre, I don't know if you can maybe pop in and just say how do you something that you know about um, Google Forms. Maybe you've used it a bit more than I have. OK, so I'm going to then go to the Microsoft Forms again. If you just on your search bar in your. On your screen, you can then just type in MS Forms or just Forms Office. It will also pop and you can you'll see when you search for it, it will take you to this to this page again. I already signed in, so therefore um, we are already on this screen. You'll see that I signed in on my uh, school account. So I have a different, a few different things, but I'll try when we get to the practical part of it, then we can maybe make a form together. Then I'll sign in again from my other account, from the WCD account. OK, so this is then what the home screen looks like. There are different options that you can have a look at. So you can make a new quiz, you can make a new form, or you can actually import from an existing form. So this is quite nice if you have um, a Google form, but not all your learners have access to Google, then you can actually import that that um, quiz, or, sorry, or the form that you have, and then it will make you a new MS, excuse, <clears throat> MS form. Okay, then you can also, there are templates available. Remember that this is, everything is online, so you do need to have um, internet connection to actually go on this platform the same with google but i know that google you can work offline as well and then eventually it saves when you are online again um i have worked offline with microsoft again but it does say on top that it's it's not saved so the moment you then have internet again it does save it but you must make sure that somehow when you shouldn't just ex um, exit the document without saving, otherwise it won't be you won't be able to access it. OK, but anyway, you then you can make a quiz. You can make a re registration form. You can get feedback. Uh, many times when we are presenting, we need feedback, um, sometimes not good feedback is given, but that's also OK. Um, you can also do some research. This is one that I've used as, a, as an example. But then this is the very nifty little um, tool that you can use that there are templates already available. So I'm just going to quickly click, click on it. And then you can see that these are templates that many people have used. So when we um, let's let's say we want to talk about community volunteer registration. So you have um, a group of learners that you know that does not do any sport or you want them to get involved with the community, maybe volunteering or doing something after school, then you can use this form. So actually you didn't even set it up. It's already there and you can then just edit it, whatever your needs will be. OK, so let's just quickly. I just want to while we're exploring, just want to quickly go in there and then just show you without you doing anything. These are things that's already available to you. The Internet is not internetting today. OK, but there we go. Um, you can then use this to collect your information. So here you will see 
um, it does give you, you the, the participants can then write, fill in their names, the telephone number, the email address, um, if they have any health limitations. So, for example, if a learner has asthma and they can't participate in sport, then they can maybe, or they want to be part of the volunteering group, then they can fill it in there. Um, but or, any information that you need from your children or people that you want to part, have part of your volunteering group will then be able to fill in here. Okay, so this is just the default one. You can change the colors if you don't like those specific colors, if you want a different picture on there, if you want the layout to be different, anything can be changed. And it's, yeah, it's for lazy people. This is a wonderful tool because there's not, not everyone wants to go and sit there and make precise little changes because you don't like the way this is placed in a certain thing, or you don't know which pictures to fill in. There are options and if you have lazy colleagues like I have, <laughs> they would just choose any picture that looks fun. Um, but then they don't, at least it's not a blank form. It looks interesting for people to actually fill in because you know that you get some forms that does not look very good. And then you're like, Ugh, I don't want to even fill this in because it's stupid. I don't want to fill it in. But when it's colorful, or when there's pictures, then you're more eager to fill it in. Or maybe that's just me being extra, but that's how I think of it. Okay. Um, then when you, let's say you're on the screen, you can just simply click back like you would on any other tool. Um, you can have your little waffle there. When you click on it, you'll find all the other apps that's available. You can find your documents that you were working on as well. So there's some, um, there is all the different apps from Microsoft. And when you click on there, you can get extra options as well. So if you don't want this to pop up every time, you can also hide it like that. Um, and then here you will find all your forms. So obviously when you have a lot of forms, it will then be from, I think it's from the most recent use. If I, if I remember my settings, but you can change it. You can also, if you remember that you had an Afrikaans quiz, then you can just type in Afrikaans and then let's quickly do that. So then it will only show you the Afrikaans quote or other quiz, sorry. Um, you can then also find other forms on there. You can fold, fold forms, so ones that already fold in, the ones that you shared with other people, and then also your favorites, because you can favorite some of your forms as well. Okay, so I'm going to quickly just show you how easy it is to actually start a new quiz and then a new form and a quick import of certain questions. So let's say you want to start a new quiz from scratch you have certain questions that you want to fill in um, these are all the options that you actually have so you can edit the quiz on top so let's say we just going to do this um ms forms practice okay and then you can fill in any description you want to fill in there um learning about MS Oops. Okay. And then if you want to, you can also then add your pictures. So let's say you want to add a picture of MS Forms. You can add that in there. So you search for it. And then if the internet is working, then you can choose a picture and add it to your form. So let's say we'd go with that one. It will then be at, at the top of your form. Okay. Again, you can change the style. So if you don't like how it is laid out at the moment, maybe you want to have it in a different style. Maybe you like this way or this way. You can choose whatever you like. It does, yeah, for some people, it looks better in a certain way. So some people like it on the one side. Some people like it in the middle. Some people don't like a heading at all. So you can choose the layout you like. Let's just go with this one. Um, and again, this looks very boring. So maybe let's just add some sort of picture in there. Okay. So again, if you don't like that specific, those specific um, styles, you can 
add just a picture or you can leave it as it is. You can even add music if you want to. So this is quite fun. Um, I've tried this with one of my groups and they were like, ma'am, why do we have to listen to this very boring music? But you can add it, it makes it a bit more fun for them. So I don't know if you, if you don't like the silence of, uh, of a Google form while you're filling it in, you can add that for some amusement or for some calming, whatever you need. OK, so just for now, we're not going to add anything. Um, you also see that some of these. Styles that's there does have this these little um, animated styles that you can actually add. Um, for me, this gets a bit distracting, but that's just me. <laughs> um, other people like it. Some people like all the extra things with the music and the videos. Um, again, if you're doing this for learners, Please just be careful. Do not overstimulate them. Um, don't do that because they do get distracted. Um, I even get distracted if I have to do these things. OK, so we'll just go with this one for now. Then you can then add on all the different types of questions that you want. OK, so the choice questions is obviously multiple choice or just there's different options. You can also um, say that it's a math question. So let's just say um, I like using this tool more. OK, um, and then you can have the Google Forms or MS Forms. OK, so that is in the multiple choice question. If you want to preview your question, you can just go to preview. And then that will show you, OK, this is what it looks like. This is what you've been doing and you can start now. What's also very cool for me is that you can actually check what it would look like if people are doing it on a mobile phone, because sometimes it does look a bit weird. So when you click on the mobile one, it will then show you, OK, this is what it's actually going to look like on the mo on a mobile device. OK, but that is just the preview. Let's just go back. OK. Then when we go to where you want maybe a date, you want to add a date, um, fill in today's date, then they will, when they have to answer it, they will then just click on the calendar and then add it to it. Okay, so when we have this, this is a required question. Also, um, when because we are doing it as a quiz, you will see at the bottom, it does give us the amount of points that this is valued. So if you want to maybe have a, you want to write a class test, you can send this out and then have the, what the amount of points they will be receiving during a test. So maybe three or four. Um, and then if it's mathematics, you will see it writes it in a different way. And if they want to have multiple answers when they maybe want to choose both, then you can just add that to it. So equal to or most to, but for now, let's just leave it as it is. OK, um, then fill in today's date. When you click on it, you will see now there's a calendar there. Um, we'll make this a required question. When we have to preview it, we'll see now. When you click on it, it will actually give you the calendar and you have to then click on it. Bradley, is there any questions so far? And if we're done with the date, you can also have only a text question where you have a, a question where you maybe just want them to fill in a word. So um, what is your name? Just for the purpose of this exercise. Again, if you if that is a required question, I do prefer making all the questions required questions because um, yeah, just otherwise you do not get the information that you actually need. If learners only fill in certain information, you end up with only the date and the person's name, but no other information. So I do, yeah, I prefer that everyone or every question is a required question. Okay, then what is your name? We fill that in if we have a ranking. So maybe you want to ask something about what do you prefer more? Then you can add this. So let's do this. What is your favorite uh, ice cream? And then you say vanilla, chocolate, and lime. Okay. Then when you answer it, so let's just quickly go and check the preview. So you'll see now that the animation is on. Our information is there. When we start this, you can choose all the little stars on there shows that it's a required question and then when i'm answering it it will actually have arrows so it will move whenever the participant is 
changing or going to the options that they like most. So this person might like lime or then vanilla, then chocolate. Okay. Um, also, something very cool for um, schools that have learners that need audio or that, yeah, that struggles with reading and all of that. What is very cool of MS Forms is that they have this reader. So when you click, you can actually let them, the, the tool will then let the learner listen to it and then they can just choose the options. So this is also something very cool. Um, I've used this on my other account. So, and you can then also, you can, if it's a learner that needs a bit slower reader or someone that listens very quick or yeah, that needs a faster reader, you can adjust it on there or you can make it a male. If you prefer that a male reads to you, then it will be a male. Okay. Okay. When you click on the little dots, you can also then disable this. If you just don't want people to, they must read what, the, what was um, given to them. Or if you want to clear the form, you can then also do it there. But be very careful when you do that. Um, yeah, because it clears everything. It doesn't just clear one question, it clears everything. Okay, so that is again just the preview. So when we go back to our questions and we have to add different a different question, you can also add a rating. This can be, this is normally one you get when you have to listen to a very boring presenter, maybe me. Um, so um, then they will tell you, is this presenter exciting or did you enjoy it or how productive was this um, session to you? So how much did you learn? Then you can have a scale there whereby they can then add the, you can change it to a star. You can make it a number. You'll see the moment you click on it, it changes the preview there at the bottom. You can have different levels. You can have up to 10. Again, um, if you're doing this for learners, do not do not give them too many options. Um, I found that with some of my high school learners, the more options to give them, the more nonsense they give you back. So I would prefer, oh, I prefer to just give them like five. I feel that you either agree or you don't agree. Um, but yeah, you can change it. You can have hearts there or you can have all kinds of things. I also like using the thumbs, but there are different options. If it's um, for someone, maybe for the prize giving, you can even say, okay, that person deserves to get that because they performed well in sports and they were academically good, then you can give them a rating on there as well. Okay. Different types of questions that you, again, that you can add. You can have the promoter score. Again, how likely are you to recommend how likely are you to recommend us to a friend or colleague? Here again, you can change it. So not at all. You can say um, not. Yeah, you can just change it as you want to. And then extremely likely is obviously the best option, but you can edit it as much as you want. Okay, that is then the promoter score one. Um, I think this is the one that I did not fill in. Yes. So this is a very nice tool that I use with my grade nines, for example, I would, you'll see when I'll, I'll show you some examples just now, where I ask them a question and then they have to choose which, where does it fit in, which one is applicable to that statement. So for example, um, if I have to ask you about image forms, um, and then what is very nice as well, it gives you some responses as well. So if I if I want to change this, how much do you know about Office 360? Okay, and then I can give different statements there. So um, I, again, you can have all your different statements. You can add as many as you want, and you can add you can change the options on top as well. So. We'll do a practice round just now of something that I have done. Um, and if you feel that you have too many options, again, you can just delete it. Um, you just simply click on it and you press or you click on the little dustbin and it deletes. And if you want to add again, you can just click on the little cross and it adds as simple as that. And then that if you um, maybe you have a specific topic that you are discussing, you can also upload a file. I know that history and yeah, normally history 
does this. They have a little extract that learners have to read and then they have to answer questions. You can duplicate this, session, this section. You can remove it if you don't want this specific session. You can move it if you want to maybe put it first or second. And then you can also, we'll add the branching just now because that is also something very cool that I have not noticed. I'm not sure, Bradley, you can maybe just pop in here. Um, does Google Forms do branching? They don't call it branching, if I'm correct. I'm really not sure about that, Ms. Kunle, because I have only used Google Forms. So if you can tell me what the branching is on Microsoft Forms, then maybe we can talk about it. Um, branching is when they select, I'll quickly show you on one of my forms. So um, if they select a certain question, it will take them automatically to a different question. That so, definitely does happen in Google Forms as well. Okay. I just doesn't, I don't use it that often. So for me, I just want certain information. Um, so yeah, this is then what our form will look like. So you'll see that it says section one there on top. If you want to move it again, you can move it down. If you want to remove the section, so it says they just a section, then it will only remove that part, or it can then remove the whole section with the questions included. So again, be very careful when you choose this option because everything will be gone. <laughs> um, and then if you want to move it, if you want to move it down, so let's just we say quickly move down. It gives you this option, and then you can just move it as you want. And when you're done, you can say done. Or if you feel while you are doing it, you don't want to move it anymore, you can just say cancel. Okay. And then again, we'll quickly do a final preview of our form. This is what it looks like. So there's all the options. Hi, please submit the form, blah, 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 blah. So this is then what it looks like. So when, let's quickly do this. So when you click on the calendar it will give you a space um let's say i like lime then chocolate then vanilla so you can see it moves down and again just to i know that my sound is not working but if you click on it it takes you to a different screen and here then when you actually play it the person will read it out you can also change the text if you want to. You can put it in a different text for the learner to follow along. You can have a theme if you want to add that to the reading while the learner is following. You can make it bigger or smaller. So, for instance, in our school, there are a few learners that struggle with reading things. So, we do have the option that they can have audio, but sometimes they do want to follow along. So then they can just follow along. You can make the size bigger and smaller for them. Um, and then you can also, uh, for smaller learners, I think it might be easier to add on the syllables. So when you'll see now when it's like this and you add the syllables on, it shows the learner where the syllable, where the word breaks up. So it might help them with answering the question or breaking up the word um, different ways. There's a dictionary that you can add. There's different languages that you can add to it as well. Um, yeah, so also a very, very cool little tool that you can use. Okay, so back to this. I hope someone is enjoying this as much as I am. Um, so you can quickly just fill in the form. Um, again, we didn't fill in anything there. Here you have to upload your form. And when you say next, you see, obviously, because it's required, it's not going to let me go without choosing options. So, again, something very cool that frustrates a lot of my learners because then they can't finish it because there is required questions. So they can't skip any questions. I love that um, because you all have, or we all know someone that just skipping through it, not even reading. Um, so this forces them to actually read and not just upload all kinds of nonsense. OK, so that is then. And again, if you go to the mobile. Mobile view, this is then how it will actually look on a on a um, cell phone. So same thing, same form, just different. Different platforms that you can actually use it.
Okay, you simply type in MS Forms. And it gives you like anything that you Google. So I use Google now, but if you use Edge, it's exactly the same thing. It takes you to MS Form login. You then just click on it. And then remember, because I'm signed in, it already takes me to this screen. But if it takes you, sometimes it takes you to this screen. Let's see if it's going to do that. No, it's not. Um, but then it will open up the screen, the Microsoft screen, where you then just type in your, your WCG schools account um, and your password, and then it takes you to this one. So this is because I'm already signed in. This is then where it takes me to. For example, or just to show you some of the things that I've done, we'll go into the practical forms and the quick import just now. So what I've done, um, I'm part of the committee that needs to assign guardian teachers to learners. So um, we we were struggling on how we're we going to collect data because teachers don't want to stay after school. Um, and then if they fill in a questionnaire, then it takes people to actually go type it in and put it in an Excel and then we have to analyze it from there. So what we've done is we actually made a form in Google Forms for the teacher. So I'm quickly going to just show you more or less what it looks like. Again, you can change this existing form that we have. You can change the style if you don't like it as it is. You can make it like this. You can change it any way you want to. So maybe we like that more. Um, just be careful that if you do that, that everything must be visible. So, and if we don't like the picture, let's put something creative on there. Um, animated on the then or maybe we want to go to the beach then we can add that to it okay so there are different options or styles that you can have then it's also customizable so if you want specific colors or images then you can go from there you can add it like i showed before okay so this is then the one that i've made so i the question the first question was just a normal full in question we staff would then um, we have staff code, so we would then have your staff code into there. And again, if I don't want this to be the first question in my questionnaire, I can just simply click on it and I can move it down. Or if I want to maybe change it into a different question or I wanted to delete it, then I can also just delete it and continue or add something to it. OK. Then I had a little grading on there. So do you think our current system is working or isn't it working? Um, then I have options, different types of questions. What did work for you? So here everyone could just type in, okay, I didn't. You'll see now when we go to the responses, they could just add in what the complaints were or things that they maybe thought that we need to work on. Okay, so this is the question that I want to show you just now when we were with the, busy with the previous one is where I give them a statement and they can then say, okay, agree, disagree. They, this is, they're okay with it or they're not okay with it. Again, you can make it less if you want to, maybe just give them three options. Um, you can, when you click on it, again, you can add or you can delete as many as you want. Okay. So this is just different, um, statements that I gave and they had to agree or disagree. Then it was just a yes or no question, yes or no question, same type of question here. Then had to type in. Then here they had to add some learner names that they maybe have a bond with. And then at the bottom of the questionnaire was just if you want to be part of the discussion, add your name because this is then not a required question. So you'll see that there is actually a star next to the question at number 10 because it is a com it's a compulsive question it's a required question but this one if they don't want to be part of it there won't be anything in it so if they don't type anything in it they won't be they will just finish with the questionnaire then what's also nice from because i actually did this it gives you some recommended questions. I didn't add this on. It was already stated on there. So if I wanted to maybe extend this form for a different group or for something else, then I can just add it to it. So I can say, okay, um, this is not very stupid questions, but there are some questions that you can actually use. How likely 
um, are you to follow the new system or provide some feedback or there's different things that is actually that you can actually add to it. And on the side, you will actually see that these are choice questions. Those are text questions. So you don't have to wonder, oh, what type of question is this now? You can just add it and then it's already a text. And here the date of the appointment is the calendar. So the little icons give you hints on what type of question it is. Or if you want to add all of them, you just add all and then you can delete it as you go on. OK, but I don't want to use any of these, so I'm just going to close it. Um, and then I'm going to show you what. So if you want to share this with. With your colleagues or with your students, you will then click on collect responses. OK, when you click on it. There are different ways or different, you know, different ways of getting um, information from your people in your your school or from wherever you want your information from. Because I'm signed in with my school account now, it is that I can only send it to people in my school or it can only be to specific people at my school. So maybe I just want this to go to the SMT. Then I can only I can click on it and I can type in their addresses there. OK, and then I can also limit it to one response per person. And I like that because many times people fill in a form and then three days later, you send them a reminder. You're like, OK, uh, remember to fill this in and then they change their minds. And then you have three versions or four versions of one person filling in the form. So I like one response per person, but that's up to you. Um, maybe if you wanted to give it to your learners, then it can be as many times as they want because they want to do it and actually get 100%. Then you don't have to click that. And then I also suggest that you do record the names because that is how you can track how your learners are doing or who didn't complete the quiz or who need, still needs to do it. Um, it's just easy way to track. OK, but anyone can respond when you. Click that option, you can see that it is anonymous that so therefore you have to have a place where they can fill in their names also just to track if you want to. But if you just want information, maybe you want only five or 10 learners to actually give you information, then you don't have to have their names. But I do like it when they actually have a space where they can write their names and tell me who completed the form. OK, then how can you send this out? You can send it by adding people, physically typing in the accounts. So there's all the people in my and um, my, my group at school. I can send them to the I can send it to them. Um, then I can also generate a QR code. So for example, you can actually scan the QR code and then be able to get into my into this specific form. We will do one just now. And then you can also have embedded code. Where you can copy this and you can send it to people. What I like is this one on top is when you click on it, you can either copy that. That link that it gives you and in, into a normal email or you can shorten it. I don't know why this isn't just an option always, but then you can either cop copy it by control C or you can just say copy link. And then this link is ready for you to paste. And wherever I then, if I go to Google or I have my um, other ways of sending emails, sending my information, or even if I want to just have it on WhatsApp, then I can just copy the link, paste it, and people have access to it. For me, this is a bit more structural, but yeah, again, MS Forms has its own nifty tools, and Google has its own nifty tools. For me, I prefer using Google uh, Microsoft Forms at the moment just because my learners actually enjoy it more. So, and a lot of them, yeah, I don't know, they, they just prefer MS Forms. I think it has more or less the same function. I don't think it is way out of the league with one another. Like the one is gray or the one is black and the one is white. I do think they have some similarities. But for me, this is quite nice because you actually have a way of presenting the information as well. And the the way, just the layout and the risk of how you collect things is nicer for me. But again, that's preference. Every one of us are not the same. 
Um, so <laughs> back to when, let's say I've sent it out now. So what I've done, I've sent this out to our teachers and then I've collected my responses. So with the responses, when you click on it, you'll see that there are 26 people that actually responded with this. You can export it to an Excel sheet, which is, which is very cool. Let's quickly, so you'll see there, view responses in Excel. When you continue, it puts all the questions and the answers that, the, that those people or the people that actually answered your questionnaire, puts it then in an Excel sheet for you to actually go and check, okay, this person agrees, this person does not agree. Again, I don't like using this way of displaying information. It looks very confusing for me. I would just go back to the way it is performed or oh, um, showed here. This you can see then, okay, there were 26 people that actually completed question one. In question two, um, how do you feel about our current guardian system? We can see, okay, everyone is okay-ish with it, um, but there's not anyone that fully supported the current system. So you can see, obviously we need to adjust and make some changes. Um, here is, do you think that management cares about our school or our learners' well-being? There are some people, um, luckily, not not anyone said not care at all, um, but somewhat care, not care. So we can then maybe call those people in, ask them a question, or we can even have a branching question there, where if they answer that, it will go to a different question where they can then explain how what what do they mean with their response. Um, here is where they had to fill in their own opinion. So we can go and have a look at this. We can see, okay, 26 responses, and this is what mo most people said that there wasn't enough time. So what is very cool, it gives you different ways of, without, I didn't generate this at all. This was just there when I said, okay, I want to analyze my information. So I can change it. I can move this to the top. Maybe this was an important question for me. Um, but here I can see, okay, um, I was a new teacher, therefore I didn't get to my guardian teacher. So you don't have to go and read through everyone's information on the Excel sheet because it's stated there quickly. Um, you will see that five people said guardian learners. I didn't know them or anything like that. Okay, um, this was the rating question. So we can have a little look at, okay, somewhat disagree. I don't, to most of our, um, most of our teachers said that they do want to actually support learners emotionally as well. And um, this is then just what it looks like. We can go check, okay, D6, D6 teachers does not have any grade 11 learners. So we need to go and check who can we put with them. Okay, so this is just a different type of analysis. What, is it, what does it look like? And then there are the learners that the people chose. And here at the, at the bottom, if you remember just now, we didn't make this a required question, but we can get, have a look now and say, okay, these, these people will have to have a discussion um, and then talk about the system for next year. Okay, and again, if you go to your Excel sheet, all of this information is also there. Okay, but that is something very, very cool, the, the, the way that you can actually analyze um, the responses. You can also present this information. So for example, let's say you're part of a management team or um, head of department, and you have to give information to either some of your colleagues or um, maybe for management, then you can present this information. So here, there is also different ways on how it is presented, the TV bar or the bar. Um, you can then just when, go on with your questions at the bottom. It tells you there, again, we can see, okay, some the school somehow cares, but 16% of the staff do not think that we care enough. Okay, um, same thing as before. Here you can change it, get okay, all the responses, then you can read through it, or the word, word cloud is there to just make it easier. Okay, guardian children, guardian parents. So obviously it was a problem with the guardian at but they didn't know what to do. Same thing here, all the different questions, you can choose how you want to present it. I love this, it makes it so much easier to analyze information or yeah, again, all responses, you read through it, very boring at the word cloud, just makes it quick and easy. You can check, okay, doesn't have time. A lot of people say they didn't have time. So that is just on how you can actually 
present and analyze the data. I agree and yeah, no one has time to go and read through all of this. Um, Okay, so Bradley, you asked earlier, because you are also an Afrikaans teacher, how can I make this practical in my class? Or how can I use, or how can I change it to make it fit into my class? So I'm going to quickly show you, there are a few ways um, that you could do, or what I've done, is you can actually import from a different quiz. So let's quickly say quick import. You can then add a file, either a PDF or a Word document. Um, there are some information that if you are not sure how to do it, it does um, give you some guidance. But remember that the size limit is only 10 megabytes. So when you click on it, let's say I had this one. So we are doing in grade 10. We did Bedouwe, that is our reader. And I had a quiz game that I played with them with the QR codes. But some of my learners were not there and I wasn't list to actually just send it out to them. So I was like, okay, we're gonna we're gonna do the same thing later on. Um, and maybe that the class average was bad, then I decided, okay, we're gonna do a Google form now, a Microsoft form now. So you can either do it as a survey where you just get responses, or you can do it as a quiz. Okay, so let's take a quiz quickly. You'll see that it then converts the information from my actual quizzes, quizzes quiz, to this new quiz. Okay, so obviously you can then change that. Let's just quickly close all of this. We can close that because that is actually from my Betuver test. So I want to quickly show you just how great it is. So let's just keep this in mind. This is the question that I've put out there. We had to read parts one to five and then they had to then obviously I gave them some questions, told them, okay, we're going to write a test about this. But the short cookies is not yet for Punkagia. When we go back to this one, the Google Forms, or the Microsoft Forms one, it's exactly the same. But the truth cookie said Noria for Punkagia. So it copies it directly from the PDF document that I have. So let's just quickly change this to Bedouven in dot five. And then we can add the date there, 14, 10, 2024. And then this will be my section one. Okay, because all of this is then based on the first part that we've done. So when you click on it, you can then also add some information on there. You can also say um, the drive three of yeah, three. I can also add a picture to it. So there, the, here you can add the video, Bradley, that you were speaking about before. But it's not part of the heading of, it's actually part of a question. So let's say we want to add um ginger biscuits just to give them a hint we can click on it we add it to it and then they know okay so maybe i gave them a picture before about ginger and they that was one of the key things they needed to remember from part three of the book then they know okay so all the questions will be based on that picture that ma'am gave us so that is then section one like we said before okay and again we will make this a required question they have to complete that and the correct answer is this. So, which is very cool. I didn't have to retype anything. I could just import it from my quizzes or from my PDF document. It also works with a Word document if you have that. And again, all of those will then be incorrect. Okay, and if you want to move it to a different space, you can just move it to wherever. You can also add different pictures on here. So if you want to add custard, or whatever the image you want to add there, you can then add different pictures for them to actually choose the correct answer. And if this is only one mark, then we can only fill in one point. So you will see now it changes from it was, so it was like the one at the bottom before, there was no star and there wasn't any mark allocation to it. So then now there is a star and we have one point. So they know that if they have this one right, then they need to, or they, they have one mark already. Okay, then we get to the symbolism. So what does the symbolism betekenen is van die klippe? So let's go to this one. Kom on, dit was nummer 1. Um, this is a required question. This is one mark as well when you click on it. So okay. Now when you 
let's say your learners does not get this right. That means that they did not understand the question maybe, or they there was some some problems. Maybe they were part with the, with the physical conflict or something that happened. Then you can add like a side question. And this is something I love. So you can add branching. So branching, this was a tak in Afrikaans. I gaan net in ander richting in. Um, this means that you can now add questions that if they get this wrong or when they if they get this right they are referred to a different question if not if you think that if they know the symbolism the symbolism behind the stones if that gives them full marks then they can jump to the end of the quiz and they're done they don't have to complete the other questions they are smart they know exactly what you were saying in your presentation or when you were teaching them so let's say they get that one was now the right answer meaning that they can then either go to the end of the form or they can skip certain questions and go to a different part of the quiz or the, the form. So again, we now just going to say this learner was so smart. After the first two questions, they can already jump to the end of the form, full marks for them for the rest. If they then choose the rest, any of the following, they need to complete the next questions. OK, so you can then if you want, if they maybe said something about someone dying, then they need to go back to question one. Then you just tell them which section they need to go to. OK, so we will demo or I'll demonstrate now what happens when we preview it. So let's just quickly. So now you'll just see that every time I click on a new question, it gives me the option of branching that question as well. If you just want to if you don't want to branch each question you can just go back and when you go to question three now you will see that it doesn't give you that option of going next going next but if you want to then have this question branch again then you click on it and you say add branching quickly um make them all required questions okay this is now the second session um, section that it generated from my worksheet just because there were more than one page this is yeah, this is just because of my questions that was on the second page again if you click on it if you don't want the sections to be there you can edit it or you can just delete it okay you can duplicate it as well but let's say that this part was now um about the two girls talking we can add again we can add an image or video so when we add the image at school so that is just maybe a reference that you gave them. I like pictures because that's how my how my learners remember things. So then I will add that picture. You can add a title to it if you want to. Subtitle can be by the school because that is the scene. Where does it take part? Also something to remember that everything that you can do in Word stays the same. So you can add things to it. You can bold it if you want to. Um, so let's say if I want to make this bold when you click on it, it exactly the same things that you've done. You can make the text bigger. You can change it. You can even put a different color on the um, same things that you can do in Word. You can do on Google Forms as well. OK, but let's say that is now our section two and we want to have question four. If they get this, let's quickly branch this one. Um, if they get question four right, they can then automatically go to section two. OK, so we won't end the quiz just yet at question two, um, but meaning that if they if they completed question two, then they skip question three and question four because they will know that. And then question four or uh, question five will then be part of section two. And here again, you can then say that you want this. Okay, let's just end the branching. We want question five to be a required question again. This is the one mark. Um, the right answer was joy. So we just click it. So you'll see the moment that you choose your option, the correct option, the others change into incorrect options immediately. So when you click on it, then you can either change it or delete it or move it as you want to. OK, but then Let's say they got not they got joy right now. I would mean, want to add a different. Let's just do it for question six. Maybe not make it so easy for them. Um, change this one into this was the right answer. We want to change this into 
a branching question as well. So we click on the three little dots. Um, we add branching and then you'll see that if they choose the other options, they need to continue with the quiz. They need to go and continue. Quiz doesn't end for them, but if they get the right answer, they can move to the next session or section. OK, and then when we're done branching, we can just go back again. Like any other tool, do not overuse um, the tool. Otherwise, it, get, it gets very confusing and but you'll still get the responses that you deserve or you not deserve. But yeah, if you make it too confusing for them, they're not going to get to where they're supposed to be. You're not going to get the information that you need. OK, so I'm just going to quickly make all of this required questions. And because my original quiz consisted out of three pages, this automatically made it three sections. So this was then just last question. Um, maybe we want to insert and here you can then just add any URL that you can get. Um, so if you want something from YouTube or you want them to actually listen to, let's quickly see if we can do that. I'm going to quickly add a video to it. Just give me a second that I can quickly. Um, nature music. I'm going to add the URL to it so there I can just paste it, paste my YouTube video and then add it to it. And then when you have that, when they click on it, they can then say, OK, Punk, where did he get his name off? Or you can even ref have a reference to the video and ask them what color was the waterfall after whatever happened. So in this case, they then know they, they knew, OK, Punk was staying in the forest. Therefore, we have the reference of the of the nature, we, you know, the, the waterfall there, and then they are required to answer the last question. And we don't want this question here, so we'll click on it and we'll just delete it. So this will then be our, the last question then will be question 10 is a required question. And question 11, we're just going to delete. We don't want that question. And then when we preview the question, nay, you'll see now that we have the picture there. Again, that little reader is there. If you want your learners to be able to use that reader, it is there available for them. Let's make this one a mobile just to show you what it looks like on a mobile, because that is most likely where your learners will use or com complete the form. So then they can choose, OK, the cookies that Nadia gave him was ginger. OK, um, the symbolism was Fisisa. You'll see now that this one, because it's a choice question, you can just click on it. It doesn't give you a different option, but it does. You can't go further than question two because question two was the branching question. So it is so amazing that it actually decides. It then tells you, OK, you're going to go down this river or you're going to go down that river. So let's say we go to Klippe, wat punk op het om vir German te gooi. That was the incorrect question. You will see then it goes to question three of the correct answer, but it goes to question three then. But if I choose the correct option, it tells me you can go to the next section. So again, just to show you that if you click on the incorrect question, it will give you the other questions that was there. But if you choose the right answer, it will take you to the second session. So if we let's say we are very smart, we went on. We are now at question three. If it is that one, it doesn't give me an option to go to the next question because I did not make that a branching question. So joy was the right answer there. Um, let's just do this one again. This was one of the branching questions. If I remember correctly, I chose the wrong option. Therefore, it gave me the next questions. But if I chose the right answer, it gives me the option to go to the next one. And here we get to the last one is where we have to look at the video if we want to. And then we can choose the right answer. And there we go. And when we submit it. You can or the learner can then view their results or they can save the response as well. But when they view the results, they can see, OK, they got four out of four um, because they're very smart. 
and they didn't have to answer all the other questions. And then when we get back to this, because I now um, showed you how it works, you will see that you have one response. So when you go back to your responses, you will see that all of your learners were very smart. Everyone got Um, Then this one, everyone got it right. This one, no one answered it because that learner already got it right. So you can then see, okay, but it wasn't a point worthy question. So therefore it wasn't really relevant. But if a learner didn't know that, they need to go and recap these questions. This is a very, very nice tool for me. So for example, with this one, um, I had the sections as well. This is just a Afrikaans um, language question. Um, questionnaire forms that I did with them. Um, I didn't share just yet because I was still playing around with some questions. I wasn't um, ready to send it out to them just yet. Um, but this is, for example, we did Stompy. So that is the correct word order and they then have to put the sentence in the correct order. So that is just, just to show you. And then here the hat, we did different, I, I don't know what it's called in English, um, and then they need to choose the correct answer. Which one do they, if they have the word yet in a sentence, what type of word is it? So this is just something that I, that again, this is something that I taught them throughout the year. We've, we've been doing sentence construction and all those things. And now it's, this is information that they need to know before they write their final exams for the year. So, and then we had a visual text. You'll see that this is now my section two is we were talking about kitchens and um, living rooms and all of that. So this is the, the picture that I chose for them to actually have a discussion about how to know like what is a fridge and all of that. And then I'll, I did some prepositions with them. And then just for the fun, I love putting Mr. Bean in there because he doesn't speak. So I can use it in Afrikaans as well. Um, but in this one, yeah, he had to, the learners had to le watch the video and then choose the correct sentence. That was what was happening in this. So again, many times learners just choose an option. They didn't want to watch the video. They didn't follow along. Um, they were sleeping, they were daydreaming. Then they can just, again, have a little look at the video. It's very short and then they can choose. I normally don't like putting videos up that's more than a minute because after a minute they lose focus. It needs to be like a TikTok video. They need to focus for only a little while and then um, you need to, to ask the questions based on that. And then we did syllables and we did body language so they had to describe this. And so you'll see every time, we'll, um, not all of these are required questions because I was playing around with it just yet. Um, because we were just discussing things in class and I saw that some of my learners couldn't, they didn't understand these questions in an exam paper. So therefore I gave them a little quiz just so that they can have those words in their minds and that they can actually not be scared when they see it for the first time in a question paper. So for example, the grade nines are writing GSC. We don't know what is in those papers. They are so used to our way of asking a question paper or our questions in a question paper. So this is just a way of preparing them with different, not different, but yeah, other ways of asking questions. And again, if you want to collect your responses, you just click on it and you can share it. Again, if I would, if I want my learners to actually have this, I will say anyone can respond and maybe I will post a QR code on the Google Classroom. Or that's how we communicate with them. Or I can even send a shortened link as a SMS to the parents and then they can quickly just answer it. Or our learners can actually also answer it if we have their telephone numbers on our system. So it depends on how you are communicating with your learners. Okay, but that is just a simple little form, just something different also with the sections, um, just to show you that it, it's in, I use Afrikaans now as an example, but you can use it in history, you can use it, you can even have um, geography where you give them a map and you can ask them, uh, what is this river called? Um, what is the direction that you need to travel on? All of this, it's more fun for me to teach learners this way 
than to just give them information in a monotone voice <laughs> the whole time. And I think our learners deserve the best version of you. And this is actually something that you can use to get the best version of you out of there. Some learners do actually just before, just they, they, just, they just want something basic. They don't want something fancy. Um, so for example, one of my classes, um, I will, for grade nines, this is perfect. Because they, they want to work, they, I don't know, they just, one of those dedicated groups. And then I find other group, or I have other groups that, oh man, just, let's just get it over and done with. And then I still do my part. I still make them a form, but yeah, I'll I'll put in some extra work for some some of my groups because I know that it will be appreciated, and I know that they will work hard to actually give me a, a good response. So, but that's each to their own. Um, so I haven't come to the end of everything, but there's things or oh, something that I just want to quickly get back to that I think I have not explained, but if I have, I'm very sorry. Um, when you click on any form, you'll see that at the side there is a template button, I guess. When you click on it, it gives you different types of questions, surveys that you can get. So let's say you have an event that you, again, that is the community member one that we just did. So if you have an event and you want people to sign up for your event, you can click on there. There's even a party, holiday party, attending conf um, confirmation, uh, school trip, consent form. These are all templates that you can use. So you don't have to do a lot. You can just go and edit it. You don't have to think of, oh my word, how many questions do we need? Did I fall in everything? There is some templates that you can use. There's also one for feedback. There's one for research. So when you're doing research, market research, or you just want, you maybe there's a new um, tool that you use or new product that you use, then you can also um, make a template from there. If you have a request form, there is one if, yeah, if you maybe have something, um, food catering, maybe you have a function school and um, you want to just know what what people are going to eat or what the requirements are, you can also use that. So let's just quickly, just now, and if it's not compulsory, but it would just we're just going to quickly do a market survey, if we can call it that. Let's just go through, are you satisfied? So let's say replace and we go from here um i'm just gonna go back to this one i thought the other one would be better okay but let's go quickly back to this one just so again you are you don't have to respond at all i'm just gonna quickly put this out there in the chat then people can quickly if they want to they can just quickly respond i don't think it's gonna be that long Again, this is just for reference so that we can quickly see. Unfortunately, I won't get any money if you do this feedback survey. <laughs> it's just so that I can show you how quick and easy it is. If you send it out to your learners, then I'll show you the response and how you can present this information as well. So I'll quickly preview it as well and then fill it in. Okay, so depending on how many required questions you have, um, it can be a short quiz. It can be that it takes the place of homework because that's normally why I send out information for learners is to, I don't want to say replace homework, but to actually let them engage with the information that we had in class. Um, so again, I would maybe post this on a Friday and tell them on Monday, we're going to look at your responses and we're going to check that you understand everything. Um, just to give them some time to actually go and do the homework. And it's not, I don't know, there's some colleagues of mine that say that this is not learning. For me, learners are still, if they have to answer a questionnaire, they are still thinking, they're still learning, they're still engaging with their content. Um, but some teachers want them to write down, some people want them to know facts. So, so Papa Hoy, I do not agree with that. But again, each to their own. But now you can see, that in less than five minutes I already received eight responses and I can then check on this I can see okay people were they were satisfied with this event and this is the general feel of my 
my current the current participants that answer the questions. So and you'll see when we go back, when we go back, it updates. So every time a Friday on a, a Friday afternoon, you go and check, okay, there were 10 people answering your questions immediately. Then normally you know, okay, uh, my class consists out of 36 learners. Most likely my learners would do it on a Friday because they don't have homework for the rest of the weekend. Then you know in future time in the future you know okay i would rather post it on a friday than i would on a set or a sunday afternoon because the sunday it wouldn't be done um that's how i again keep track with when to post certain things so you'll see now we started with nine and we're currently already at 13 and it doesn't change anything when you go on there there it says, Bradley, it's not half an hour. The average time is two minutes to complete the survey. Um, so there, that again, you'll see when we first look at it, most of it was here at this side, and now it moved. And it updates again. Every time that someone is answering the question, then it updates already. And so this is very, very cool for me. So now we have 14 responses. So when this is now for the computer, right? This is how it will look on when you open it up on a computer. But if you open it up on a mobile phone, I think most of the participants currently use their phone to just quickly go on it. This is what it will look like. It, there's no information that is taken away. It's just a layout and obviously the pictures that will look a bit different when we go back to the mobile part you'll see that it just puts it in a different more compact way um yeah there's no information that's taken away it doesn't it just changes that layout a bit it, so it's not dots now it's a block for example um, and then the same questions are there all of them are question three it's all the different parts of the question and then they can choose as they want to. So if you want to, I can quickly, let's say I'll, I'll answer this. So we get exactly the same questions, exactly the same things. It's just a layout that's a bit more compact. So, and then those were not required questions. So we'll say submit. And again, if we had the options that they can submit more than one response, there will be an option there that they can submit another one. Or if you did not add that setting to it, it will just say thank you for your, your feedback. And you'll see now again, in 10 minutes, we already have 16 responses. And then if we have to present it again, we can present this to it. We can send that link again, or now we can say, okay, you're satisfied. This is, so 68% of us were the first time that we're attending something like this. We can add it to a bar if it's more visible, appe appealing. Um, there we can see, okay, this is the feedback we received, different types of questions with different feedback, most likely to recommend this. So more people will recommend than not recommend. These are things that I've showed you before. The word cloud, if you wanna actually read it, it will look like this. Is the word cloud again? I love this. Like Bradley said, teachers don't have time to go and read through a lot of information, especially language teachers. We have paper three that keeps us busy. So the shorter, the easier to read is much better. And then all of these were just word cloud questions.